Uh, could you tell us a bit about um, your area of interest with the Ayn Rand Institute? Particularly, I understand that you're interested in a health care issue. Yes, so I work at the Ayn Rand Institute. We're an organization located mainly in Southern California, and I focus there on health care policy issues. So trying to you know, show people how Ayn Rand's ideas can really illuminate a lot of the crucial health care problems that we have in this country, in, in the United States, and also tonight we'll be talking about it from Canada's perspective. Right, because your, your main focus, I would imagine, in the United States is Obamacare today, right? How is Obamacare being implemented in the United States? Is it having a lot of problems, I understand? Yes, it's definitely having a lot of problems. The rollout has been very shaky, and uh, Nancy Pelosi famous, famously said that we have to pass it to find out what's in it. So every day we're finding out more and more what's in it, and Americans are realizing that, hey, this is not what they wanted. And that's because Obamacare really wasn't the cure. People thought it was going to solve our health care problems, but in my view, it was really more of the poison killing the patient. So the problem in our health care market in America, in our health insurance market in particular, was that government was so intrusive, so controlling it, and that's what caused all the problems we had, the unaffordable premiums, the fact that people couldn't find coverage, and Obamacare doesn't deregulate. The solution is to deregulate. Obamacare just adds on a whole new layer of regulation and, of course, that's not going to solve anything. It's going to make things worse. One of the papers you've written on this subject actually identified the, the, the myth that prior to Obamacare, you weren't regulated enough. That's right. That is the perception, and it's a perception that people share within the United States and outside of the United States. And definitely tonight when I'm speaking, I'm, that's one of the things I'm going to clarify, that the United States did not have a basically free market before Obamacare, that in fact it's very controlled, has been for decades, and that that has really caused so many problems. Right. As a matter of fact, I think people probably will be surprised to find that as a political concept, socialized medicine in the United States started with FDR at least in 1946, you implemented, uh, by you, I mean, of course, the United <laughs> States implemented um, your Medicare program in 1966, which was even before, here in Ontario, we implemented our socialized medicine program called OHIP. So is that another fallacy that you're trying to get out there to the public to say that, especially to Canadians, if you think that you're doing something that is not the American model, that's a myth. Well, I think the calls for socialized medicine in Canada, it's something that Ayn Rand actually wrote about, and it was back in the 1940s in Saskatchewan. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the United States, yeah, we've had our eye on socialized medicine as well. We haven't um, achieved it as quickly as you guys did, but from the early 1900s, from Teddy Roosevelt's time, uh, people have been calling for a national health care program in the United States. Uh, since it's been implemented for a long time, Medicare, Medicaid, and now the Affordable Care Act, and in Canada it's been around since the mid-60s as well, mm -hmm. at least in this province, how do you envision a political solution to this? Do you want to do a sort of a, a slow reversal of everything that's gone on, withdrawing things one by one, or do we need some sort of drastic measure to get, it, get us out of this uh, socialized medicine problem? Well, you know, some things I think can be done drastically. Other things do need to be phased out over time. So things that do need to be phased out over time are things like Medicare, Medicaid, because the reality is that people have come to plan their lives around those programs. So those need to be done a little bit slower, but ultimately they should be fully repealed, abolished. Things like health insurance, private health insurance in the United States, to the degree it's private, it's still very controlled by the government. But that deregulation, I think, could occur very, very quickly. And what we should be striving for is a free market in health insurance because we see in freer insurance markets, for example, in life insurance, things work great. There are no problems. People love it. It's affordable. People can get it. They're satisfied with it. And we could have that in health insurance as well if we deregulate it. So you're not suggesting that we pull the rug out from under people's feet, those who've, who um, are planning their lives around having socialized medicine and being taken care of in their old age. You want to do it necessarily slowly so that people can adapt. I mean, to the extent that, you know, that's possible. I mean, that's really a question. If we get to the point in the United States where we decide, well, we want to get rid of Medicare, and it's just a question of how, um, I'm sure there's a lot of actuaries out there who could figure it out the best way to do it, the least damaging way. Really, the challenge is to convince Americans that they're not better off under Medicare, that they should, as seniors, want to be in a health care market that's free, not one that's controlled by the government, not a single-payer health care system, which is what seniors have. Now, the Ayn Rand Institute, 
course, would take this tact from an ethical perspective, not simply one of pragmatism saying that this is a better way to run your health care government versus private individuals. You would take a, an ethical point of view. What is that? Well, I think when we say that private individuals should be in control of their health care dollars, there's a lot of moral evaluation behind that. It's the idea that, you know, if you go out there and you have a job and you earn money, you should be able to decide what to do with that money. You should be able to spend it on the values that will further your life, make your life the best that it can be. Um, and what you see in programs like Medicare, American Medicare and Canadian Medicare, is you have the opposite. So the government takes your money, and now you're basically at the whim of the government, the mercy of the government. The government will spend your money as it sees fit. Maybe you'll get some health care, maybe you won't. How much you'll get, which kind of doctors you can go to, what kind of treatments, when. That's all dependent on the government. And that's not a moral system. You should want to have a system in which you're in control of what you've earned. So you can really use that to make your life the best that it can be. So it's a moral issue. It is absolutely a moral issue. That is the crucial issue. I mean, people know and they can see that capitalism works, that capitalism delivers the goods, that capitalism is a system of innovation and greater affordability and all sorts of things. But the reason we don't have it uh, in the United States or anywhere is because people find it an immoral system. And that really is the challenge. And that is, of course, what Ayn Rand provided for the first time, a moral defense of capitalism. To play the devil's advocate, people would say to you, well, what about the poor? What about the people who can't afford uh, their own health care. What do you say to that? Well, certainly the history has shown that nothing is better for the poor in terms of raising their standard of living than capitalism. So today's poor can achieve, uh, can afford things like TVs and microwaves and cars. And if you compare that to countries, say a country in Africa where they don't have capitalism, the poor there are much worse off. So if you look at it through time and if you look at it you know, spatially, you can see capitalism is good for people of all income levels, but it's definitely good for people who are lower income. But I think the real perspective doesn't is should be that you should want to earn health care. Health care is not an entitlement, and that's what most people think it is, that you shouldn't have to pay for it, um, that someone else should provide it for you. And, you know, that's not the American system. The American system is not you are your brother's health care provider. In fact, it's the opposite. America, for the first time, the first country in the history of mankind, said, no, you have a moral right to exist for yourself. And unfortunately, the direction we've been moving in health care in the United States and in Canada is the opposite of that. And, of course, morality doesn't end at the border. So when you say that it was a moral system in the United States, it's moral in Canada as well, isn't it, or all over the world? to have a capitalistic system or a free market system in health care uh, insurance. Absolutely. And the reason I think you guys have a socialized medical system, even though there's a lot of problems with it, I'm going to discuss some of those problems this evening, is because you guys think it is ultimately the moral system, the right system to have. So if we want to fix Canadian health care, we have to start challenging, is the system right now currently moral? Or is there something, or is it immoral? And is, is the free market actually the moral system? Rita Pranavastu, thank you very much. Thank you.